Dick, thanks for joining us. Good it's evening, a pleasure Dick. having you on. And how's everything going down in Florida tonight? Very nice. It's always nice and warm down here. No, oh, there you go. They always <laughs> they always rub it into us New Englanders up here, Tony. But uh, a little background sure about uh, Dick Drago for our viewers out there. Signed uh, by the Tigers in '64. Tony as a free agent. Uh, spent 13 seasons in the big leagues. Be big leagues between '69 and '81 including uh, the expansion Kansas City Royals. And that'll be my first question for you, yeah. Dick. Uh, 1969, brand new team, brand new uh, stadium, brand new manager. What was it like for the, with the 69 Kansas City Royals? Well, it, it was interesting. We didn't have a new stadium yet. We okay. were still playing in the old municipal stadium. But okay. uh, um, there was a lot of young kids. Of course, we had a lot of young players. Yep. And uh, spring training was quite interesting with, you know, when they have expansion teams, they have a conglomerate of players, things like we had 30 pitchers down there. So it was quite a contest, and, you know, there was a lot of uh, competition trying to make that club. Yeah. I know I, uh, well, at first I was disappointed. I, you know, I signed with the Tigers, and that's where I wanted to play. I mean, I grew up idolizing the Tigers as a kid. I grew up 50 miles from there and spent four years in the minor leagues, and at first it was kind of disappointing because, I didn't even know where Kansas City was at the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you grew up around Toledo, Ohio. Is that correct, Dick? Mm-hmm. All right, and there you got the Toledo, uh, Detroit. Uh, yeah, the, the the mud hands. Right there, yeah. and uh, uh, Dick won 11 games for those expansion Royals in '69. What what impressed me, Tony, about the Kansas City organization just three years into their existence, uh, I think in '71. They actually uh, were very competitive, 85 and 76. This is after yeah. three years in existence. Right. But uh, the 69 Royals, of course, uh, obviously you're going to take your bumps and bruises. But uh, how about the, you know, when I think of Kansas City, Tony, in those days, and even up to the, uh, when they, Kauffman Stadium and all right. that, was the heat in the summer. Dick, we used to see the heat coming off the rug when it was uh, the artificial turf there. What was it like playing in the summer in Kansas City? It must have been hot at times, I would think. It was hot everywhere, even the old park. I mean, it was yeah. downtown. It was close to downtown. It was all enclosed. I mean, it was a hot place to play. There's no question. And when we went to uh, Royal Stadium, Kauffman Stadium mm -hmm. now in 73 and got on that turf, it was uh, it was quite a uh, event to watch the guys that had to play every day, especially you, you uh, could guys see the that come in. I remember them through. putting... Uh, <laughs> Piece of the cabbage, I think, and, or and, and inside their hat and ice and stuff and things in their shoes. And <laughs> it, it was it was quite a place. But I tell you what, I really got to really one of my favorite places in the whole country was to play there. I mean, it was a great city, clean, nice town. I mean, when we, you know the whole Kansas City, Kansas, Overland Park. I mean, yeah. it was, it's quite a quite a quite a place, and uh, we enjoyed ourselves. I mean, you know, it's a little different back then. When uh, expansion now, it seems like you're able to load up. I mean, there were free agents. There weren't any free agents then. You had to get all the guys you drafted were mostly guys that were just uh, just coming up or guys that were maybe injured. Same for your organization. Yeah, absolutely. But he did a good job. They really they did in about three years. They made a couple of trades, got uh, Patek and yeah. and uh, uh, Cookie Rojas and o Amos Otis. And that kind of helped Good out a players lot. Players quickly, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> again to have uh, to go 85 and 76 in your third year in existence, Tony. Back then, of course, I, and like Dick just said, it wasn't like it is now where you could load up and, and kind of fill in the cracks quickly. But uh, they did it from the ground up there. They but, really uh, did. You're watching Monday Night Sports Talk on the phone with us, former Major League pitcher Dick Drago. Tony, question for Dick. And, and Dick, good evening. It's just such a pleasure to have you. The uh, were you getting frustrated in the Detroit system? I mean, you had that 15 and 6 year, and it's like, when am I going to make it up to the big club? I mean, how did you feel when you were leaving the Tigers and uh, coming over to Kansas City? Was it like, hey, this is my chance to pitch, or oh, my God, what's going to become of me? Well, kind of a little bit of both. Like I said, you know, back then, back then, you know, they didn't bring – I mean, you, you put your time in in the minor leagues. I mean, it was – you know, I, I won 15 games. My first year was kind of rookie A ball as the, the Florida State League and Carolina League. And then the second year, I kind of established myself in 66 in Rocky Mountain. Won 15 games there. And went in, went to double A and won 15. And then played and actually played my hometown in Toledo in 68 and won 15 games there. And we won the championship in the, the International League that year. And the Tigers won the World Series. It was, uh, they had a lot of talent. And, 
you know, I thought I was ready. I, I was in spring training. I, I made the big league uh, 40-man roster in uh, for the spring of 68, and I pitched real well, but they had the decisions to make, and they kept a couple of other guys. I was the last one to get cut from spring training that year mm-hmm. and kind of hurt, you know, when they went to the World Series. But mm-hmm. And then, when, like I said, I always wanted to play for the Tigers. I mean, I was very disappointed at first when I, I was actually in Puerto Rico playing in winter ball. It's a funny thing I think about all this when I'm watching these games. The guy's going five innings, and I remember pitching 185 innings in AAA that year and another 110 innings in Puerto Rico when I was 22 oh, years did, old. Did the idea of, of getting pulled on a pitch count ever enter your universe at all? I don't understand this. I mean, they say, well, this, kid, <laughs> this kid is 23, so they got to watch his pitch count. I said I had 300 innings in when I was 23. Boy, you oh know, boy. so... Anyhow, I got, you know, when I got drafted, but then I started thinking, I said, this is, you know, my opportunity to, you know, get to the big leagues now. You know, I was, I'm going to have a great shot at yeah, it. Yeah, Nate. Yeah, and uh, again, uh, we're on the phone with Dick Drago, and as we go along, we're going to show more pictures, pictures of, of Dick, yeah. Dick on the screen, various baseball cards uh, of his over the years. But, uh, Dick, I mean, we, we talked about your time in Kansas City, and I'm looking at some of the managers you were uh, played under there, Joe Gordon, Bob Lemon, Jack McKeon. These are some big names. Uh, but especially Lemon, since he was a, a great pitcher himself, how was he as a manager, and, and how much did he have to do with your development as a pitcher? Well, he was very easygoing. I mean, he was yeah. just one of these kind of laid-back kind of guys, you know, and he did that even in, in New York when he went there, you sure. know. He kind of just... Made everybody at ease. He was kind of, you know, he he didn't he, he come out to come out to take you out. He just say, "Hang with a meat," you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hang with a meat, you know. Yeah. But you know, he, you know, all my, I have to give credit to one guy that really kind of got me the big leagues, Johnny Sane. Johnny, huh? Uh, in the minor leagues, he was a pitching coach in Detroit, and he came down to winter ball and worked with me on a slider and taught me how to slow, throw a slider in 15 minutes. And, wow. Um, you know, he, he, I felt I was ready when I got there. You know, it's not like – it's funny how they say how these young kids today when they're 25, 26 have to learn to pitch in the big leagues. Mm. Well, you know, I my first start in the big leagues, I pitched a complete game. <laughs> Yeah, that would you never know, happen these days. <laughs> in my second game, I pitched a complete game. So wow. I know things are different. You know, you had, I mean, but just think about the Fergie Jenkins and the guys who went 300 innings and Lowliches and McLeans and Bob Gibson. These kid, guys, I, I don't, I watch this and I, I just, I just cringe when I see guys go five innings. I've been watching the Red Sox the last five or six games. Yeah. I'm also, I met through. Somebody else is doing a. I write a blog every night mm-hmm. in this thing for a guy in New York coming in on the games. And I'm going, when when is somebody going to go more than five innings in a yeah. game? You know, they're at the that hundred pitch taxed. mark. Yeah, yeah. The, the bullpens get taxed. You can't you can't let use four guys every night. Yeah, and that's gonna, it's going to catch up to you. So you're either way. You know, it's 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 a tough thing. They baby them these days, Dick, and it's it's just a way through high school. I I it, I don't know how and I when it can yeah. change. It's but, all uh, money. It has to do. You know, again, mm-hmm. I made. You know, we made thirty thousand dollars a year. So if you broke your arm, I mean, I mean, they didn't not watch after you. I mean, and now they have more knowledge how to repair, how to repair injuries. You know, you, you sure. had rotator cuff. You were done. I mean, yeah, yeah and some true. of the things, but. Yeah. I don't understand. They have so much more of available, and they're bigger and stronger, but yet everybody's breaking down, yeah. even with all the other things. So I don't know. Yeah, we talked to Gates Brown a few months ago, and he, he kind of said the same thing. You mentioned Mickey Lowe, and he said, Mickey Lowe, pitch counts, what's yeah. that? You know, he just kind of said, <laughs> it just, you know, we're, we're not talking yeah, a different it's, language with uh, Gates. Oh, no, I, I heard Seaver talking on MLB one night. He's yeah. saying, you know, my pitch count was 140. Somebody else might be 130, but... You know, yeah, Fergie wasn't. Jenkins said the same right. thing. Ah, you know, maybe 150. Four man rotation, I, I, they but they weren't counting. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. You imagine doing that to Bob Gibson or Drysdale? <laughs> I wouldn't want to say Bob Gibson. <laughs> me give no. Me the ball. <laughs> no. But uh, Dick, your best year, obviously 1971. How's this for your Tony? 17 wins, yep. ERA of 2.98, 15 complete games, which staffs don't get that now. Uh, four shutouts, two, 240 innings. Uh, what was really impressive to me, Dick, well, 1.7 walks per nine innings, which uh, you must have taken a lot of pride in that. Fifth in the AL, 
in the Cy yes. Young Award voting behind guys like Vita Blue, Lolich, Wood, Dave McNally. I mean, these are these are great names, but uh, that was uh, the year the team really picked it up. But uh, I mean, that was definitely your best year, and you pitched 200 or more innings from 69 to 73. And then in 75, you went strictly to relief. I was going to ask you how that came about. That's an interesting uh, what question. What necessitated that transition, and uh, how, how tough was it for you to become a relief pitcher? Well, I guess I was the first Dennis Eckersley, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Um, but I pitched, well, I got traded there in 74, mm -hmm. over the winter of 74. And in 74, they had, we had... They had a ton of pitchers, but uh, we had Marshall was there and Rick Wise. They got Rick Wise and several other pitchers, mm -hmm. and guys were breaking down. So I was like, we, I would start one week, relieve twice, and I pitched. I don't even remember. I don't I pitched 180 innings or something. I felt like I pitched 300. Wow! Because it was like you'd start merge. You go to the ballpark and the ball be in your blocker because the guy was hurt. Somebody was hurt or couldn't pitch. So. I was doing everything in 74, relieving, starting, everything. And um, they came to me in spring training they, in 75. They said, you know, we got a lot of starting pitchers. I think he could really help us. It, it closed me. And they thought I had to make up because I just got ready. It didn't take me long to get ready. I, I just had kind of that type of arm that was able to make the adjustment. So I said, well, I got to do one or the other. You know, I kind of said, you know, you know, I felt like, again, like I'd pitched so much, even though 180 innings, it felt like it just broke me down. So mm, yeah. they said, well, you know, we, we, we think that you could help out because we don't have anybody right now. And so, and with that, that's how it all came about. And uh, I went from a four-pitch pitcher to a one-two-pitch pitcher. I mean, I think I, you know, it's a whole different game when you get to the closing part of it, when right. you're just short. short. And I, you know, I added four or five miles an hour that I never had before. Wow! And the <clears> so, slider, the slider was your out pitch, Dick. Is that true? No, I was always a fastball pitcher. Pretty I mean, much fastball. fastball was, yeah, I was a fastball pitcher. The slider was was the pitch that I learned after I kind of you know went through the, the minor leagues and and but I was always good control. I had good movement. My ball moved. It was heavy. Yeah. Guys would say that I threw a heavy ball, but I also had even when I threw harder. The ball always ran. I, I I made my living pitching inside on right-handed hitters. I mean, not throwing it, but I, I got a lot of guys out inside part of the play. I mean, great I, control. Awesome. Yeah, Monday night good control helps. There you go. Monday night sports talk on the phone with Dick Drago. A few more minutes. Tony, question. And Dick, you mean a lot to our local viewers in New England because of your socks. Uh, play during uh, 75 and 78. Now, you end up with the Sox in 75, and you're in the World Series. And for those of us that will never be in a World Series, uh, tell me what that was like. I mean, you had a great playoffs uh, coming into there, and then, uh, you know, you were uh, very active in the sixth game, and uh, there's just uh, there, there's a lot to tell, and I'd like to have you tell it. Uh, there is a lot to tell. I mean, that series, I think it took three weeks to play seven games. <laughs> I remember yeah, that. Yeah. Remember all the rain and there was bad oh, weather. Yeah. And, but it was, it's funny how everybody asks about spring training. And spring training, I mean, the World Series is kind of a joy. It's kind of like a carnival. It's kind of uh, relaxing in a way compared to the playoffs. Because the playoffs, you've just pitched, played 162 games. And now you've got to go win three more or you go home to get to the World Series. So the playoffs, especially against Oakland, they were three times world champions in a mm -hmm. row that we had to that we had to beat. And I think there was more tension there than the World Series. You know, once you get into it in like game six, I mean there you know, I was out there in the bullpen, we were three runs down in game six and I was coming in to pitch the ninth inning of that game, top of the ninth, we were down six three. So, you know, it was kinda just going through the motions and and getting ready to come in and pitch and, you know, looking like we weren't going to be, you know, that was it. And then right. all of a sudden, you know, you stand there in Carbo, it's a three-run homer. All of a sudden, I'm in a tie game, you mm -hmm. know, and now all of a sudden you got to get your game face on and be ready. And the pressure, I guess, pressure is how you make it, and I'm sure every a lot of other people you talk to. Some guys perform under pressure, some don't. Mm -hmm. um, I was better when the things meant something. When I had to come in and mop up or a game didn't mean anything, I seemed to get myself 
and more trouble. Mm. But I love that part of it to go in there and this is you and uh, and the hitter. And I mean, there were times that in that year that it was it was fantastic to come in there and, and close games. I mean, it's just it's just so intense. I mean, there's guys people still come up to me that remember games that I pitched in '78 mm-hmm. in Toronto when we had lost that big lead to the Yankees. And now we were fighting to get back in it. And I came into two games in Toronto with bases loaded, and we were two games back with two to play or whatever it was, and got out of two or three games in a row up there. And people still talk about that. And that's kind of my kind of pride myself is how you perform in the clutch. Right. I should tell our viewers out there, the 75 <laughs> postseason, Dick, Dick Drago, two saves against Oakland, Tony. Right. Uh, a total between the ALCS and the World Series, eight and two-thirds, five hits, one earned run. So Dick's uh, postseason ERA, Tony, just above one. Uh, four innings uh, pitched in the World Series. Very effective. And, and an honor to have him in the home run tonight. Uh, and again, five years, his total five years in Boston, 30 wins, 41 saves. Uh, I, I got to ask you, Dave, uh, Dick, about pitching in Fenway uh, with the wall and everything. Was it daunting at times, or uh, didn't it bother you at all? At first, when you first go there, the first time it does because mm-hmm. you you start thinking about going away from the way you pitched. I remember the first. I learned my le- one thing about me. I think I learned my lesson real quick on things. <laughs> I, mean, I came in there with Kansas City, started against Boston one night, one day, and I went completely away from the way I pitched. I pitched. You know, pitching inside to right-handers, I started trying to go away, and and all mm-hmm. these guys were just flicking the ball into the net or into center. I mean, you just can't change once you realize you just can't change the way you pitch there, and that wall is a big, and the rest of the park is pretty big except for right field. It it I enjoyed pitching there, I really did. And once once I got over that first game, I was fine, and I enjoyed it, and it. It's, there's nothing like playing there, number one, yes. especially if you're when you're with the Red Sox. I mean, you know, you got full house every night, and and uh, it was just it was just a joy to go out there and knowing that you're performing in in one of the best arenas there ever it was. That's for sure. We I think Frank Sullivan <clears throat> told us the same thing. Told us the about same pitching thing. There, uh, Gates uh, Brown loved batting there. Yeah, absolutely. Question. And, and, Dick, just a couple of uh, w- what I find, uh, I'm, I'm not going to call them oddities, but uh, particularly in your career, I understand that you were uh, perhaps the premier bench jockey. And uh, oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Now, being a family uh, show, I mean, can you recall started, like... That's what, that's what pitchers do. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you recall like a bench jockeying story, or, you know, uh, uh, clean I version? I wish I could. It's too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. We, I, I just I don't remember business. I just remember things pl- with playing with Lou Pinella, which <laughs> was really a big joy of my life. Yeah, and, I, and watching I was... him, watching him in the dugout, uh, come in and try to flush Helmus down the toilet, and <laughs> oh. and uh, let's hasn't see what changed else. much, I guess. Ripped all the buttons off his shirt at the time and put tape on it. And went back out to left field, and I have stories about Lou and. And uh, Rick Burleson was another one that you didn't want to talk to when you came into the dugout oh, yeah. at all or before the game. You know, Mister was a hothead, Tony. Yes, yeah, he, he was. I remember. I remember. A, a bench jockey. I used to just get. Out. I mean, it was just you know, as a pitcher, you had to had time to <laughs> you had to figure out how to take up all the time you had. So yeah. you sit there and ride guys on the. On the other team, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounded like you had a lot of fun playing baseball. Yeah. I'm looking at some of your old teammates. Uh, you mentioned Pinella, Ted Abernathy, Tony. And yeah. Some guys like Bill Spaceman Lee. The, the, the oh, yeah. More flakier than that, right, yeah. uh, Dick? Uh, but, Bill was well, not fl- He was just, Bill was smart. Bill was Smart just, guy. Uh, you know, he just goes to a different tune. He's just uh, on a different place, you know. <laughs> he just is. But, yeah. Yeah, and, I have to think back of those years that I played and the guys I played for and the guys I played with and against and, you know, the Reggie Jacksons and, the, you know, the, uh, it was just a ton of, you know, Boog Powells and Frank Robinsons and Brooke Robinsons. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, you think about it, there was a lot of uh, Hall of Famers that came through that era that I was there. I, was, I helped yeah. them get, some of them get there, you know. Yeah, well, I, but I, I, I <laughs> yeah. was impressed by the list. You mentioned Fisk, Yastrzemski, Rice, yes. Tony, uh, Nolan Ryan was a teammate. Nolan yeah, I Ryan. played with Nolan right. Ryan, Frank Tanana, Tanana's Joe another Rudy, one. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Bonds. Louis Tion, I was. Uh, oh, Tion's my favorite of all time. My favorite teammate ever. 
He, you know, I heard him on the yeah, uh, he was on with recently. Ed Randall up here in New York the other day. He still sounds good, and he uh, he's still a character, uh, Dick. And yeah, they got that movie, uh, that too. documentary, isn't yeah. it? There's a documentary coming he about his to life Cuba. in Cuba. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, saw, I saw a little bit of it. He was just something. And uh, i got about a minute left, Dick, just uh, telling us basically what you've done uh, with yourself lately. I know you're into golf, and uh, how close do you follow the game? Uh, what do you do in your spare time now? Well, you know, I'm, I'm happily retired i guess mm -hmm. baseball was good to me as far as that our baseball pension is fantastic and yep i got enough time i got a time in at the right time and Excellent. um i just kind of hang out here in florida and enjoy the, my kids that are down here and i do play golf i'm involved with the red sox and their fantasy camp every year and i do uh, the alumni i do a few of the alumni golf tournaments uh last year we did a red sox yankee reunion in scranton Pennsylvania, a 78 reunion game there, and they're trying to talk about doing that everywhere because they said they had, we had 9,000 people there at Scranton wow. for that game with Gossage was there and Roy White and and uh, Lee and Tion. It, it really is a cultural event, Dick. It really, yeah. you know. They said it could go every. I said, you know, we could do this every week. Wow. Yeah. That's something. You know, it's great. To at do. every minor league park, but. Yeah. So I, I knew that, and I, 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 I'll be up in uh, Williamsport this year for their golf outing Excellent. for the Little League World Series, and and I sit here, I'm, I'm a computer nut, as probably Bob knows, <laughs> since I'm on Facebook. I, I, I do come across you, but uh, I, 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 you're involved in a lot of stuff. It's great to hear that uh, baseball was so good to you. We, we've heard other stories on the other end, Tony, which sometimes uh, guys just, they miss pensions or whatever. We can go into oh, that yeah, a little bit. Oh, yeah, there's, there's a few. And but, uh, again, you know, I play, I, I, I sit here on my computer and I play the stock market uh, sometimes good, sometimes not. <laughs> well, like anything else. But, uh, Dick, thanks so much. Tony thank and I you thank so you for giving us a few so minutes. Much, and uh, it's really a pleasure having you here. Uh, we'll try to get this uh, up on the website pretty soon. And uh, I'll be in touch, Dick, and uh, have a great day. Okay, thanks again. Good night, Dick. Thank I you so much.